So we are starting off with chapter that is ang angle properties. Angle properties. Now this is basically lecture one. So with the very basic stuff, what angle property has, your angles can be classified into different types, which can be acute angle. Acute angle is angle less than 90 degree. Angle which is less than 90 degrees. So if we just draw up the acute angle, your acute angle can be in this shape. This is your angle less than 90 or it can be on this side as well. This is your angle which is less than 90 degrees. Then we have right angle, right angle and what does right angle do right angle has angle equals to 90 degree angle equal to 90 degree which means that your angle will always have a horizontal line and the vertical line. It can be in this shape or on this side as well. But if you see that whenever a 90 degree angle is created, it will always be created when your horizontal line, horizontal line meets the vertical line. Any two lines that are given in the question, if they seem to be horizontal and vertical, we will not consider it 90 degree until unless it is specified in the question. Until unless it is specified in the question. The question will itself tell you that it is your 90 degree angle or is the horizontal and the vertical line meeting. Then the third angle that you have is obtuse angle. And the obtuse angle is angle that is greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree so if we just draw up the angle the angle can be in the shape like this when two line meet but this angle is greater than what 90 degree similarly on the other hand there are two lines meeting this angle is also greater than 90 degree so this will be called as what obtuse angle. Then we have is a straight line angle. Straight line angle or it is also known as straight angle. That means we can easily say that angle equals to 180 degree is called straight angle is called straight angle which means a straight line which is created so at the point at any point on that straight line at any point on that straight line your angle would be 180. Your angle will be 180.
AT. Similarly, there can be angle known as reflex angle. And reflex angle, reflex angle is one, is between 180 degree and 360 degrees. So any angle that is between 180 and 360, it is known as your straight angle. Any shape, that means if a line shows like this, if a line goes like this, and this particular angle will be more than 180, but obviously less than 360. So this will be known as what? Reflex angle. It can be on both sides again. It can be on this side as well. So this is your reflex angle. It can even be like this. So this angle is known as your reflex angle. So any angle with uh, more than 180 but less than 360 will be known as your reflex angle. Then you have angle at a point. Angle at a point. When you have angle at a point, that means any line, any line that moves in direction, let's say this is your A, this angle is your B, and this angle is your C. So the point of angle, that means that the sum of all angles at a point is 360 degree. At a point is 360 degree, which means A, I write it down as A plus B plus C will be equal to what? 360 degree. So that means at any point, if you're talking about the entire angle at any point, A, B, and C, when we add them together, the angle will always be summed up to what? 360 degree. Then you have complementary angles. Your complementary angle, the sum of all angles is equal to 90 degree. Complementary angle, that means that the sum of all the angles will be equal to 90 degree. So that means you already know that when your horizontal line and your vertical line meets, it creates a 90 degree. But if you break this thing into two angles, so let's say this is your C, angle C, and this becomes your angle D. So your C, angle C, plus angle D should be equal to what? 90 degree. And whenever your two angles are equal to 90 degree, they are your complementary angles. With respect to that, you should also know that there are supplementary angles. There are supplementary angles. And what does supplementary angle do? The sum of all supplementary angle is equal to 180 degree. 
we can always say point on straight line is equal to 180 degree. We can always say point on straight line is equal to what? 180 degree. So if there is a straight line and on that straight line there is a point and that point gives me two angles which means this is your A and this becomes your B and that means A is acute and B is obtuse. So your A plus B angle A plus angle B sum should be equal to what? 180 degree and that 180 degree will be known as your supplementary angle. That will be known as your supplementary angles. Then we have is vertically opposite angles. Now what do vertically opposite angle do? That means if you have two lines and those two lines are intersecting at a point. Those two lines are intersecting at a point. So the two opposite angles will be equal to what will be same. That means if this is your angle A, then this angle, let's name it as C, will be equal. Whereas if I name this as D, this angle D will be equal to angle B, which clearly means that angle A is equal to angle C, whereas angle D is equal to angle B. Let's write down angle is always shown as this way. So that means any particular angle can be equal to. So whenever there is vertically opposite angle, let's just given it out an example as well that what if we had this is your x there's a point if i say this is 60 degree so automatically this will be your 60 degree as well whereas if this angle is 120 degree this angle should be 120 as well point on the point on the x or point on the your yeah, point of the angle will always be equal to what 3 60. That means if you add down 60, 120, 60, 120, it will always be sum of what? 360 degree. So we had angles. We started off with what? We started off with acute angle. Acute angle is angle less than 90 degree. Right angle, right angle always makes up 90 degree. Obtuse angle is always angle greater than 90 but less than 180. Reflex angle is always what? Angle greater than 180, less than 360. Straight line at a point. Straight line angle at, at a point makes up what? 180 degree. Angle at a point means point of angle. Means at any point the angle will be have, the angle will have some of what? 360. Then we have complementary angle. Complementary angle has always sum of what 90 degree. Supplementary angle will always have sum of what 180 degree. And vertically opposite angles will be same because of creating X in it. Now let's just move to your types of triangles. Types of triangles and we'll be obviously talking about their properties as well so the first type is scalene so scalene triangle is based on no side or angle in triangle is same. That means all the sides and all the triangles will be different in this. So if we just write down 
that the scalar triangle shape can be like this, but continuing that this is angle A, this is angle B, let's say this is C. So the sides will be different as well. We can consider this as X, Y, or Z. So scalene triangle, no side or angle in triangle is same. Then what do we have? We have isosceles triangle. You have isosceles triangle. In isosceles triangle, two sides and two opposite angles to those sides are equal, which means if you have a triangle and your triangle is A, B, C, I will take this as considering that angle C is X, so angle A will be X as well. And the side opposite to angle C and the side opposite to angle A will be equal. So which means the isosceles triangle will always have two equal angles and two opposite sides to those two equal angles, same. But the sum of the triangle will always be equal to 180. Sum of triangle will always be equal to what? 180. So that means that we can always find out any angle when one angle is given. So we can always find out angle B if the isosceles angle X is given. We can always find out X if the angle B is given because the sum of the triangle is always equal to 180. But when we are talking about isosceles triangle, two sides and two opposite angle to those sides are equal. When it's all about isosceles triangle in the isosceles triangle, two angles and two opposite sides will be equal. Then we have is equilateral triangle. In equilateral triangle, in equilateral triangle, all sides and all angles are equal. So in this regard, what we can draw up is three, we can draw up triangle with three sides of the C. So this is angle A, angle B, angle C. So your angle A is 60, your angle B is 60, your angle C should be 60. So if this is five, your BC side will be five, your AC side will also be five. If, if AB side is 10, then all the other sides will be same. So scalene triangle when all the angles and all the sides are different. Isosceles triangle when your two angles and two opposite sides are same. An equilateral triangle when all the angles are same. That is 60, 60, 68. So that means all the sides will remain same as well. Then we have is right angle triangle. Then we have is right angle triangle. So when you have three angles in any triangle, one 
angle, one angle is a right angle that is equal to 90 degree that is equal to 90 degree and the remaining the remaining two angles will be acute angle will be acute angle now if i just drop the shape of right angle triangle your horizontal meets your vertical but there's a line which is opposite to 90 degrees so this becomes your right angle triangle so your 90 degree is when the horizontal meets the vertical but these two angles will be acute angle but in right angle triangle the side side opposite to 90 degree will be maximum side of a triangle or that will be the longest side i'll use the word that will be longest side which is called your hypotenuse which is, which is called your hypotenuse. So opposite to 90 degree is always hypotenuse. So your right angle triangle is when you have three angles and out of those three angles, one angle is 90 degree. The other two angles makes up what? Acute angle. So the opposite side of the 90 degree will be your hypotenuse. Then you have acute angle triangles then you have acute angle triangle in acute angle triangle all angles will be less than 90 degree all angles will be less than 90 degree which means this can be in the form like this all the angles will be less than what? 90 degrees. But if we talk about obtuse angle triangle, your one angle will be obtuse. Your one angle is obtuse, whereas remaining two angles will be acute. Your diagram for such question or such triangle will be in this shape. That means you will have obtuse where these two angles will be acute. So we started off with what? Acute angle, right angle triangle, obtuse angle, straight line angle, reflex angle, angle at a point, complementary angle, supplementary angles, vertically opposite angles. Then we move down to type of triangles, scalene triangle, isosceles triangle, you have equilateral triangle, then you have right angle triangle, you have acute angle triangle, then you have obtuse angle triangle. So these were your type of angles and type of triangles up till now. So moving on, we as we discussed more about type of triangles, you should be knowing that sum of triangle is always equal to 180 degree. So sum of triangle is equal to 180 degree. So if we have, if you want to find out exterior angle of a triangle. So exterior angle of 
triangle. So the exterior angle of the triangle will be sum of opposite two interior angles. Exterior angle will have sum of will have sum of opposite to interior angle. So that means if we just draw up a triangle, if we just draw up a triangle, considering this is ang as angle A, angle B. So at this point, let's say this is angle Z. Now, we can easily say that angle Z, angle Z will be equal to sum of angle A plus angle B. So exterior angle of the triangle is always the sum of opposite to interior angle. Opposite to interior angle means the angle that are opposite to this particular angle. So that means sum of A and sum of B. If we had exterior angle here, so that means that the sum of the two interior angle would be this angle and this angle. If the exterior angle would have been here, then the sum would have been this angle and the angle here. So whenever you need to find out the exterior angle of the triangle, the exterior angle of the triangle will be equal to the sum of the two interior angle of the triangle of the side that you need to find in. The most important part, this applies to the angle property as, property as well. We have angles formed by two parallel lines and transversal line. So that means the three angles that can be used here are alternative or alternate angles. Alternative angle form Z alternate angle form Z. Angles are equal. Angles are equal. So that means if we consider this as what two parallel lines. So let's say this line and this line are parallel. There would be a sign of parallel as well. The two arrows. And there would be a transversal line. This is your transversal line joining the two parallel lines. But the angles generated through this will be, let's say this is your angle A. And considering this, if this is your angle A, let's say this is your angle B, but these both will be same. So your angle A will be equal to what angle B. So whenever your Z is created in parallel line, for parallel line, two arrows are important. And obviously, if you do not have parallel line, you cannot apply alternative angle here. So applying alternative angle, you need to have a parallel line and the transversal line that intersect the two parallel lines so that these two angles can be formed. Similarly, with more example to this, you can also see that if this angle and this angle should be same as well because it is a straight line. A straight line angle creates what 180 degree. So if these two lines are e these two angles are equal, then these two angles should also be equal in the alternative angles formed by the two parallel line and the transversal line. Moving on, let's say we have two more angles corresponding corresponding 
angles. Now, again, corresponding angles are also find, formed through the parallel line and the transversal line. But normally, they form F. They form F. They are equal. But the other part is angle above parallel line are same. Whereas angle below parallel line are same. So let's just draw parallel line considering the corresponding angle. There are two parallel lines because the arrow is important. Let's say there is a transversal line. So if you see, if you see that, let's consider this as A and this as B. Both the angles A and B are above parallel line. So angle A is equal to angle B considering that both the angle are above parallel line. Now, noting that if this is A, this angle should also be A and this angle should also be B. So these are because of the vertical opposite angles. These are through the vertical opposite angle. But if you see angle below parallel line is A, angle below parallel line is A, this one, and angle below this parallel line will also be B. Similarly, if this is A, this is B, if this is A, this is B, and these all the angles will be equal. On the other hand, let's say if we have, considering this as C, considering this as C, and so this part should be the same angle, so C should be equal to the angle E. So if this is C, this angle should also be C because of vertical opposite angle. Whereas if this is E, this should also be E. But if you see this corresponding angle, angle above parallel line is C, angle below parallel line is E, these two angles will be equal. Whereas angle below parallel line is C, angle below parallel line is E, these two angles will be equal. Noting that these are what? Corresponding angles. These are what? Corresponding angles. The third, the third angle formed from parallel line and transversal line is sum of interior angle. Sum of interior angle, or we can also say co interior angles. Now, co interior angles, they form. C. They form C. The sum of two interior angle angle is equal to what? 180 degree. The sum of two interior angle is equal to what? 180 degree. Now considering this, now you have two parallel lines. This is your parallel line. This is your parallel line. And there is a transversal line. There is a transversal line. So if you see that if this is, this angle is C and this angle is D, we can always say C plus D should be equal to what? 180 degree. C plus D should be equal to what? 180 degree. So that means if C is 60, D should be 120. Whereas if this angle is E, so let's say this angle is F, so E plus F should also be what 180 degree because sum of interior angle is applied. So when we talk about angle formed through the two parallel line and transversal line, we will always have what? We will always be having alternative angle that creates Z, corresponding angle that creates F, and sum of interior angle that creates C. 
So this is about it from lecture number one of angle properties.